Welcome to Sunday Night Bible Study here at First Baptist Church, Calico Rock. Tonight we're going to begin our study of John chapter 10. So if you have your Bibles, please be turning to John chapter 10. We're looking at basically five chapters of the Bible that you can go to in times of trouble, times of stress, that should encourage you in John chapter 10 just happens to be one of those chapters. And of course, in John chapter 10, what we're going to be seeing is Jesus tells us that He is the Good Shepherd. He's the Good Shepherd. And that's what we're going to be talking about. But now Jesus makes a clarification or a classification here because He talks about the Good Shepherd But then he also is talking about a bad shepherd or a false shepherd. And so that's basically what we're going to be looking at tonight because we're not going to get very far tonight in John chapter 10. But uh, let's begin with a word of prayer, okay? Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day. Thank you for this time that we've gathered to look at your word. We pray that our hearts would be open, our minds would be focused on what you're saying to us through your word tonight. We love you, we praise you, we give you honor and glory. We lift up these who've come out tonight, a special blessing for those who are watching. And we ask this in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. John chapter 10. I think before we can actually talk about John chapter 10, I think we need to lay some groundwork because between chapter 9 and chapter 10, the people that Jesus is talking to does not actually change. He's talking to the same group of people and actually, if you'll read chapter 9, you'll really see what Jesus is referring to In John chapter 10. So I tell you what let's do. If you have your Bibles. Let's go back to John chapter 9. And let's look at John chapter 9. It's very important. Once we look at chapter 9. And talk about it just a minute. When we go into chapter 10. And we see Jesus being a compare. Starting to compare. The good shepherd with a false shepherd. Or a bad shepherd or a false teacher, then we'll understand, wow, I see it now, because here's what happened in chapter 9, and here's why Jesus told the parable in chapter 10 about the shepherd. All right, so let's go back to chapter 9, and let's just take a little time and read chapter 9. Now as Jesus passed by, I'm reading from the New King James Version. Now as Jesus passed by, He saw a man who was blind from birth. So how long was this guy blind? From birth. Had this guy ever seen before? No. He'd been blind his entire life. Verse 2. And his disciples asked him saying, Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parents that he was born blind. Now, there were teachings during this day that if a person was sick or a person had an infirmity, there was a cause for it and the cause was either sin in that person's life or sin in the person's life, maybe there if their father or their mother Someone that was maybe a generation before them. That was the teachings of that day. The religious teachings. And so his disciples had heard these teachings. And so they asked Jesus. And Jesus was very quick to clear up this. You know, isn't it strange how man can take things and twist them and turn them around? The devil's good at that too, is he not? He did that in the very Garden of Eden. So anyway, let's get back to our story. The disciples asked Jesus, 
who was it that sinned? The reason this guy's blind, was born blind, was whose fault is it? In other words, whose fault is it? Was it his fault, the man that was blind? Or was it his parents' fault that he was born blind? Verse 3, Jesus answered. Here's a good teaching now. Neither this man nor his parents sinned. And he gives them the reason why. Here's the reason why this man was born blind. But that the works of God should be revealed in him. Woo! Praise the Lord. You know what that gives me? That gives me wonderful hope inside of me. Amen? That sometimes the troubles that I have, the infirmities that I have, the sicknesses that I have, they're not because of some something I've done or something my parents done, but God could possibly be working within me because he wants his word to be revealed through me and his glory revealed through me. Just think about the next time you have a hurt or a pain. It may be because God wants to do something special in your life. Amen? The reason this man was born blind was because God... Glory should be revealed in him. Look at verse 4. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no man or no one can work. Jesus is still talking here. This goes right along with the sermon that I had here last week. Folks, we must work for God while we can, amen? And of course, there's an old hymn that we sang. I don't think we've heard, I've heard it here, maybe one time. But uh, I remember it in my home church. Work for the night is coming. This is where they get it from, right here. They get it from scripture. Let's go to verse five. As long as I'm in the world, Jesus says now, this is red, as long as I'm in the world, he says, I am the light of the world. As long as Jesus was in the world, he was the light of the world. Amen. That's what scripture says. Now, Jesus physically in body is not in this world anymore. So in scripture, we find that Jesus later says, Who's the light of the world? Huh? We are the light of the world. Because Jesus is in us and he's through us. Let's go on. When he had said these things, now the guy's still blind. The disciple's standing there, the guy's still blind. When he'd said these things, he spat on the ground. In country folks' language, he spit. He spit on the ground and he made clay with his saliva. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay that came from his saliva. And he said to the blind man, verse 7, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. What do you suppose would have happened if the guy would have said, I don't think I'm going to go to the pool and wash. I like this clay on my eyes. It feels pretty good. You know, these women go and get this clay mask on their face, right? He said, I think I'll just leave it on here a while. Do you think the guy would have received his act? You know, I'm not sure what would have happened, but I do know this in studying the Word of God. There is something about obedience that God blesses. Amen? Obedience is a requirement for a blessing. Obedience is a requirement for a healing. Obedience is a requirement for a, a miracle. Obedience is the requirement of even walking with Jesus Christ. Amen? 
If we want the blessings of God in our life, if we want a miracle in our life, if we just want God within our life, period, there must be obedience. But the guy, what did he do? He says, go wash in the pool. So he went and washed. And because of that, he came back what? Seeing. Can you imagine not being able to see your entire life? Only hearing of things. Only hearing of people saying, Oh, those, those roses look so beautiful. Those red roses are so beautiful. Or maybe someone making reference of a beautiful woman or or something that's so beautiful, the scenery or something, and you're there, never, you have no idea what it even is because you've never seen. It's one thing to have seen and lose your sight, but it's another thing to have never had sight. Can you imagine when this guy come out of the pool and things begin to come into view? Can you imagine the joy in his heart? Hey, Amen. Now let's go on. Verse 8. Because we really hadn't got into the what I want you to see before we go into the 10. But it's coming. Therefore the neighbors and those who previously had seen that he was blind said, Is not this he who sat and begged? Some said, Yep, that's him. This is he. Others says, Well, he looks a lot like him. But there is something different about him. Now, that ain't what it says here, but that's exactly what they meant. Well, it looks like him, but there's just something different about him. I'll tell you what was different about him. He could see now, amen? I won't tell you something. Spiritually, there's something different about a man, woman, boy, or girl, who is blind spiritually, and then Jesus comes into their heart, and they begin to see spiritually there's always something different, Amen? Oh, it may look like the same person. Hey, man. You may swear, that's a, hey, that's got to be the same person, but there's just something different about him or her. And so they said, well, he is like him. And then the guy said what? Hey, you know what? I am that guy. I'm him. <laughs> it's me. It's me, Margaret. Hey, man, it's me. So they begin to ask him, verse 18. Verse 10, I mean. Verse 10. Therefore they said to him, How were your eyes opened? He answered and said, A man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and I received sight. He had a testimony, did he not? And he shared that testimony. I believe every man, woman, boy, and girl who's ever been saved has a testimony. And I think we need to share that testimony. Amen. Then they said unto him, Where is he? Where is he? I could just see the wheels turning in these folks' head. Well, if he did that for you, I've got a little problem. I think my hips are out of place. I think i got a little rheumatoid arthritis going on here. I think I got a little gout in my big toe down here. Where is this guy at? And he said, I don't know. I don't know where he's at. I just went and did what he said to do. I come up seeing. And I'm going to tell you, I was so excited. I've been running around. I don't know what happened to him. I don't know where he went. So let's look at verse 13. They brought him who formerly was blind. They brought this guy who Jesus had healed to the Pharisees. Now the Pharisees, we know who they were. They were the righteous folks of the city. They were the religious folks who thought they were righteous, right? They were the people who knew everything there was to know they thought about the Word of God, the Old Testament, and what God wanted, and what He was going to do, and, and how He was going to send the Messiah. 
But here's the Messiah in front of them. Basically, we'll see in a minute. They don't even know it. But anyway, here's the religious folks. And so they bring this blind man to the Pharisees. Verse 13. Now verse 14. Now it was the Sabbath when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Now, the Sabbath was the Saturday. Saturday is when Jesus did this. Now, what's so special about the Sabbath? Well, the Sabbath was the day of worship. Sabbath was the day of the Ten Commandments which says keep the Sabbath holy. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. That's the commandment. And they were so sure that they were going to keep the Sabbath, they would not allow anyone to do anything on the Sabbath. It was a holy sanctified day. I mean, don't even take your false teeth out and brush them on the Sabbath. Don't go out here and get an ear of corn on the Sabbath if you're hungry. Don't pull your ox out of the day. I mean, don't do anything on the Sabbath. Anything. If you do, it's a sin. You'll go to hell. Do not do that. And so, verse 14 says, Oh, by the way, it was on the Sabbath when Jesus did this miracle. Then the Pharisees, verse 15, also asked him again how he received his sight. He said to him, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and I see. Verse 16, therefore some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. Now, they're not talking about the blind man here. They're talking about Jesus. Because he's, he didn't just say he. I'm sure he told them it was Jesus. A guy, man named Jesus who did this. And they say, oh, this guy. Then he can't be of God because he does not keep the Sabbath. And others said, those must have been a lot of the liberals. And, and here comes some of the conservative, a little bit of conservative Pharisees. They had a little conservatism in them. They said, well, how can a man who is a sinner do such signs? If he's not of God, how can he, how can he do these good things? And there was a division among them. They began to bicker with each other. They began to kind of fuss back and forth. Who was right, who was wrong about this man called Jesus? Verse 17. They said to the blind man again, what do you say about him? Because he opened your eyes. He said, he must be a prophet. But the Jews, verse 18, did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they call the parents of him or he, yeah, him who had received his sight. They say, well, he's telling a story. He's lying. He's, he's, this is, he wasn't blind. This is a lie. And the other said, well, let's call his parents. See, his parents are know. So they called his parents. And they asked his parents, verse 19, is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered him and said, we know that this is our son. And we know he was born blind. But by what means he now sees, we don't know. Or who opened his eyes, we do not know. They're saying, we wasn't there when this happened. We wasn't there when his eyes were opened. We weren't there when... He received this miracle, but we do know it's him that's standing before you. And we do know he's been blind his entire life. We were there when he was born. And we know he's been blind. But then they say this. They say, I'm paraphrasing a little here before we go on. They're saying, but we're kind of confused that you're even asking us because he is of age himself. He's old enough to answer for himself. So why don't you ask him? Verse 22. 
His parents said these things because they feared the Jews for the Jews had agreed already that if anyone confessed that he was Christ, he would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. Verse 24, So they again called the man who was blind and said to him, Give God the glory. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, Whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I know that though, I was blind, but now I see. Now they said, here's what you need to do. You need to give God the Father glory because the man who you said did it, he's a sinner. We know he's a sinner, so you don't need to say it was him. You just need to give God the glory and and, and, and don't mention Jesus. But he said, he said, whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know. But there is one thing I know. I was blind, but now I see. That's, boy, I can just, if I'd have been there, I believe I'd have shouted right then. Amen. Who praise the Lord. Because that's every one of us. Amen. We do know that we were lost and bound for hell, but there's one who came from the portals of heaven. He put on a fleshly body. He began to to walk this earth and he took upon himself the cares and the burdens of the entire world and he went to a place that he should have never been, but he loved me so much that he, he went there to the cross of Calvary. He laid down his life so that I could say, I was blind, but now I see, amen. Not only that, but they took him down. They put him in a bar of tomb. You know why it was a bar of tomb? Because he wasn't going to be there very long. Amen. The guy who bought it and guy who owned it, he could still have it. Jesus only needed it for three days. Amen. And he was resurrected. Amen. Let us go on before I get out of, out of kick out of the traces. Some of you young folks don't know what that is. Go home and Google it. It it has to do with mules and plowing. Verse 26 says, Then they said to him again, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And he answered to them, and he said, You know... (laughs) I turn on the television and I see these people today and I'm thinking to myself, now, I'm thinking to myself, how can these people be so blind and to not see the things that are happening in our society and in our world? How can these people be so blind and not see these things? Amen? Do you ever think that? Do you ever think that? I mean, I think about things how people can say we need to save the spotted owl, but yet they're for abortion, killing babies. I I see people who we need to save the whale, we need to hug a few trees, but hey, let's kill the babies. I don't understand how a, a woman that's pregnant can be murdered and the person who did that can be charged with two homicides. But she, as a, as a mother, can go to an abortion clinic and, and right but the day before the baby's born, they can go in there and they can tear the arms off of that baby and they can puncture the skull of that baby and they can kill that baby and pull it out piece by piece and say, everything's legal, everything's fine. Folks, it just doesn't make sense, amen. But it happens every day. I don't understand that. And I see this right here. These Pharisees. Oh, can you tell me again? Oh, can you tell me again how he, uh, how he uh, opened your eyes? How, how, can, you, can you explain it to me one more time? 
And this guy, say, I love this guy. <laughs> this guy says, I told you already. Look there, verse 27. He answered them, I told you already. And you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become one of his disciples, Jesus' disciples? Look at verse 28. Then they reviled him. They began to get angry with him. Their faces turned red. Their blood pressure began to grow up. The hair on the back of their necks began to stand up. I can see it. Then they reviled him and said, you are his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know, verse 29, we know that God spoke to Moses. As for his fellow, as for this fellow, we do not know where he is from. Talking about Jesus. The man answered and said unto them, Why? This is a marvelous thing that you do not know where he is from. Yet he has opened my eyes. What he was saying here was, I know who's blind here in this room. I know who's blind. Hey, you're blinder than I was. That's what he's saying here. He said, I don't know why you think you don't know where he's from. Do you see what he's done? He's opened my eyes, this marvelous thing that's happened. Verse 31. Now we know that God does not hear sinners. But if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. He said, this guy who did this, he was from God. Because God heard him and did what he asked. My eyes were open. Look at verse 32. Since the world began, it has been unheard of that anyone opened the eyes of one who was born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered and said unto him, You were completely born in sins. And are you teaching us? They were saying, How dare you come in here in the synagogue, how dare you come in here and try to teach us things? You know, it kind of reminds me of what Jesus did when he was 12, right? They found him in the temple teaching. This guy's in there telling the truth, telling what Jesus had done. And here's what they say. They say, you were born in your sins. How dare you come in here and try to teach us spiritual things? Boy, they would have been good if they would have just listened to this young fella, amen? They would have been good if they would have just listened. Now the next three or four words is where we're getting into what's happening in chapter 10. Look here. Verse 34. They answered and said unto him, You were completely born in your sins, and are you teaching us? And what does it say next? And they did what? They cast him out. Here's our first thoughts of what Jesus is going to say in chapter 10. Because the Pharisees took this man that God, Jesus, had just healed. He was spiritually prepared for a relationship with Jesus Christ. He was a new convert. And what the religious folks should have done was to take this young man and said, well, praise the Lord for your conversion. Now come in and we're going to disciple you and we're going to teach you the things of God and we're going to show you and we're going to lead you down the right path so that you can have a life with God and that you can be a witness for God and that you can lead others to Christ yourself. That's what they should have done, but instead they cast him out. Let's go on. 
Jesus heard that they cast him out. And when he had found him, he said to him, do you believe in the Son of God? Here's a picture of salvation, folks. Right here, coming up in these next few verses. Here's a picture of how every one of us that is saved, God saved, right here. He says, do you believe in the Son of God? He answered and said, who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said unto him, you have both seen him, and it is he who is talking with you. Then he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. Ain't that salvation right there? And Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world that those who do not see may see, and that those who see may be made blind. Then some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Jesus said unto them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say we see. Therefore, your sin remains. Here we see the foundation that is laid for chapter 10 of John. Jesus is going to talk to us about the good shepherd who is Jesus and how we must come to the Father through the good shepherd because the good shepherd is the way we get to the Father. There is no other way. And we're going to learn this in John chapter 10. Now, you say, well, what has this got to do with encouragement during troubled times? Because we're going to see in John chapter 10 just how much Jesus loves you. Hey, man, as he voices himself as the shepherd and we are his sheep and how the shepherd cares for the sheep and loves the sheep and what the shepherd will do for the sheep. And that's what we're going to be talking about in John chapter 10. Our time is already up for tonight, but uh, we have laid the groundwork. I wanted to lay the groundwork to chapter 10. It's very important. You have to see, Jesus has, still has the same people he's talking to, and then he begins to tell John chapter 10. Uh, and we see, because he's just gotten through with this guy being cast out of the very sanctuary of God. Listen, folks, he was the very person they needed to take in, but they cast him out. And so Jesus begins to explain to his disciples and others the difference between a good shepherd and a false teacher or a bad shepherd. And that's where we'll begin next week, Sunday night at 6 o'clock. Thank you all for watching. God bless you.